Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message on underestimating what our elders have gone through, on underestimating what our elders have gone through. I think that as we get along in life and we hear various stories from those who have gone before us, we tend to have this, at times, attitude as if those things would never impact us. Sometimes we tend to be a bit nonchalant and we think that, oh, well, you know, that was their day. That's not my day. And then, of course, we have our share of issues with those elders who have told their share of experiences. And so, therefore, what they say falls on deaf ears. But can I tell you today that there's a reason why for some of you all, There are those stories that people who care very much about you share. And sometimes it is nothing but God that is moving on those people to share some things that you feel are irrelevant or maybe stupid or beneath you and whatever else you would like to describe what they're saying about their experience or experiences. I am not one for shutting people off when their experience is something that feels, looks like God. Wisdom shows up in a way where you may not be able to connect with it at that moment, but something on the inside, it's like a tingling sensation or a warm feeling or a aha moment. It is a time of self-reflection even. What they're saying, does it have something to do with maybe what I'm doing right now or what I might do in the future? Elders have a story, a story that is intense, a story that is heartfelt, a story that can move you to be better than them, even though they may appear like they're very prideful, very smart, got it going on. There is something about what they tell us at times that all we have to do is just listen for the counsel, for what God is moving us to do. Something about what she's telling me is making some sense. Something is resonating within me. The other day when I was talking to that one or this one, It wasn't happenstance. You see, that is what I'm triggering in some of you all. What you heard not that long ago coming from an elder. What you connected the dots with. What you pieced together wasn't happenstance. Whether it was positive or negative, it wasn't happenstance. Some people forget what they have prayed. That's why I encourage some people to start writing down what you have prayed concerning your situation that you're in because an elder or a family friend or even a stranger on the street, God can use to communicate some very deep heartfelt things that will give you the peace of mind to keep going, to fight another day, to break the strongholds of bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. That piece of information just might be what propels you to be bigger and better than what you are today. I'm encouraging some of you all to give an elder a little bit of your attention. (laughs) That you will just tune out what you heard from somebody else for a moment what you believe, what you assume, and just hear what is being said. Even if it is a lie, hear what is being said. And then soon after, take that time out with the one true God and ask him, Lord, what am I supposed to glean from this conversation? We underestimate others experiences because sometimes the demonic has a way of putting pride before us. Why should I listen to her because she has no degree? Why should I listen to him? Because he says too many 
catchphrases or slang terms or that's annoying how he does this or that. Why, oh Lord, couldn't you have sent somebody that looks like me or acts like me or has a degree like me? Oh, we got those individuals who when you take on that sort of attitude, that is why God will simply shut you out and shut you down. And then you don't get the wisdom. You don't get the experience. You don't get the insight. You don't get to walk in on the side of light. Instead, you end up being that one that's walking in darkness. You end up being that one that's troubled. You end up being that one who's still miserable and discontented about whatever it is that you're going through while you're trying to call on demonic activity, demonic forces, or even demonic people that you don't even know are demonic. Satan is not going to go around and tell everybody everything about himself. Come on now. He's a master deceiver, a father of lies. And some of you all, you're listening to those people, children of darkness, because of their money, because of their fame, because of their power, because of their influence, while you are ignoring that one who is wise, just not as educated as you. While you are ignoring that one who is poor, maybe financially but rich with God. Am I getting through to somebody? Because see, as we are moving closer to the one true God, we got to be open for whatever he has in store for us to be able to propel to the levels that he wants us to be at. And we can't do that when we're sitting around talking to people or even not talking to people. OK, that are not functional, healthy human beings. But as I've said many, many times before, negative and toxic. We underestimate people's experiences, believing that nothing's going to happen to us when in all actuality, sometimes the reason why the person's coming to us, telling us this thing out the clear blue is because they see something that is about to happen based on the decisions that we're making, based on the things that we have said to others, based on what. Uh, we've been influenced by. Can I just tell you something, so, says the elder. Back in my day, we used to do A, B, and C. And this thing happened and that thing happened. And one of those disrespectful smart mouth types would say, so why are you telling me this? And this is where the elder will say something like, I'm telling you this because I'm seeing my younger self in you. And I don't want you ending up making the same mistakes. Now, that's where the elder needs to just leave it alone. You said your piece. Walk away. Don't say anything else to the hard head, to the egoist, to the I'm so young, dumb, and <laughs> fill in the blank, some of you all. You don't have to say anything else to them. Just let them figure it all out. But I don't want to see him suffer. You suffered. I know that's all the more reason you suffered. You didn't want to hear what people had to say either. Remember, you didn't think you were going to one day get older, that you were going to be forever young. I, I remember even talking to one of my sons and he said something about he's going to be young always or something. And I started laughing. I said, you got to be kidding me. No, honey, you're going to get old. You're going to get old. I mean, some of them, they have this little mindset like, well, old is a long way from here. No, it's not. <laughs> it was like yesterday, right? Some of us remember when we were 16 and 21 and 32, okay, and 40. No, <laughs> you're not going to be forever young. And when you talk to some of these younger people who have this sort of countenance about them, and you've already given your life experience. That's it. Your work is done. That's mission work without going overseas. That's mission work without doing some of the things that we historically know missionaries to do. Because talking to a young person who is spiritually malnourished who believes him or herself to be something of a God is a challenge when you see 
that they are sinking. When God himself gives you a vision and sees a noose around their neck or the demonic taking uh, puppet strings and using that child in such a way where they're nothing more than a mere puppet. They're not even Pinocchio without strings. <laughs> you know what I mean? When God gives you a vision where there's a dark spirit or you feel something evil off of them. That's mission work right there. And you state what you have to state based on your personal experience. Be as transparent and honest as possible and then move on. We have no time for those individuals who want to be disrespectful or think that they know so much. And once again, I got to caution some people about when folks say things like they're so mature for their age or they're so polished or so professional. Can I tell you that there's so many actors and actresses in this world? Okay. And I remember being quite youthful and at times having to put on the mature act before adults and them saying that about me back when I was once again very young. You learn how to act. Just because they act mature does not mean that they are making mature decisions. Just because you look at someone who's older doesn't mean that they are mature, right? That's why some young people end up being quite disrespectful. And they do underestimate the experiences of their elders because they've learned that some of their elders are nothing more than children of darkness. They've learned that some of their elders are not very smart, yet they are actors and actresses too. So you've got those that pretend to be intelligent, those that pretend to be quite mature, those that pretend to be wise. We got a lot of hypocrites. We got a lot of hypocrites in kingdom business. We got a lot of hypocrites out in the world. We've got a lot of people that are supposed to be distilling information, knowledge, um, and all of that good stuff into the younger people. And they're too busy working or they just can't wait to get them out the house or I can't wait until you go get married. I don't care if he's an older man or not. Just get out my house, daughter. And I did. Not that long ago, do a message about when sons and daughters are overprotective of their mothers. And there's a lot of information in there for some of you all who have been dealing with this son, adult son, adult daughter who's still at home and you want them gone. But before you send them on their way, give them some valuable life lessons, some experiences, some things that you did that were quite dark, negative or ugly that set you back financially, that set you back mentally, uh, that set you back spiritually um, and then give them the lessons on what those stupid decisions did to your life. <laughs> I mean, some people got those kind of stories. And then those who are listening to this elder who's speaking or appears to be rambling Try to hang on for as long as you can to what they're telling you, because chances are God is going to use that person to say something to you that is profound or is something that will save you a lot of money. It may just be something that will keep you from uh, making a left turn, right? It might keep you out of some trouble that the demonic has up his sleeve. Once again, it might save you from getting married to the wrong one. I remember there was a person who uh, was helping me out with my bank account and I had made a statement about I was getting married. And this was back um, in 19. Uh, uh, it would have been 1999. And um, the individual said, oh, have you considered couples counseling? And I said, no. I said, uh, we've been together for about a year. No, actually, it was two, almost two years. I said, I don't think we need that. And besides, he already said he wouldn't be going if if we um, it, even if we did attempt to want to do something like that. 
or if I suggested it, something I explained to him. And he was, he said, no, I think that it would be wise that you all had couples counseling. Um, what are you fearful that, uh, you might not get married if you go through with it? And I say, yep. <laughs> um, I mean, I, well, he says, you want to know though, some things before you get married, because too many people waste their time getting involved with folks and then later on divorcing. And I was like, mm hmm. You know, <laughs> that young person's, mm-hmm. And I was about, uh, at the time, 24. And so, basically, that's how it went. I left that bank, and uh, the elder said what he had to say. And I went on about my business. I did not take the counsel. And then about eight years later, I got divorced. So, see, I want to, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I'm getting passionate here. I want somebody to understand that if you are in a place where you have a dilemma of some sort and you've prayed and you've asked the Lord, Lord, I need some help. And then you happen to come across an audio or a video or you come across somebody that is in a, a setting that isn't typically what a doctor's office. Right. Or a psychologist, uh, you know, practice or what have you. It's, it's nothing like that. But yet they come with some information. Rest assured, there is something that's going to happen in the future that God is using that person to keep you out of harm's way, to keep you from being that one that's wounded and upset and bitter and, and just going out of your mind. Later on in life, I ended up finding out that this person definitely was not the one. Later on in life, I realized that I had to learn how to be more uh, focused in on what my happiness, my joy uh, is about rather than trying to be a people please or trying to appease. And I'm telling you along the way, the Lord sent me these mothers of the church. Come on. He sent me some people that I was willing to listen to while the young folks was running around saying whatever, doing whatever into their phones or, you know, just I'm not present. But yet I was the one that lingered. I was the one that asked questions. I was the one that wanted to know more than what meets the eye, you see. And so when you are that one that I don't care how old you are, whether you're 20 or 60 plus, if you're the one that just opens up your, your, uh, you know, your mind a bit and not be so closed off, there is information that you can learn from both the light and the darkness and God will be able to get you to where you need to be because you're in the know, right? Too many believers, they say, I stay away from this information because this is demonic or what have you. But that just might be the information that you need in order to go into the trenches and help somebody who is caught up in the occult, somebody who is um, caught up in some type of demonic witchcraft, somebody who is making all sorts of bad decisions and poor choices in a mate. Sometimes, you know, there's the information out there that has nothing to do with our uh, lives. Like there's singles information I'll come across. I'm not single, but I know there's some people who are. It would make sense to be up to date on what's going on when it comes to uh, people dating nowadays, Be if, especially if you have adult sons and daughters um, who are single or if you're running a Christian singles ministry. I mean, really, you need to know what the world is up to while you know very much what the spiritual is up to as God leads, though, as God leads. So God is leading some people in the coming weeks uh, in these settings where some interesting information is going to be brought before you. And that is information that you'll pray about. That is information that you will not move to the right or to the left on, but that you will only move according to the will of the Lord. Some information will be the kind that you'll simply throw away because that is not for me. <laughs> I don't know who that woman thought she was talking to or who that man thought, but that's not for me. But there will definitely be more wisdom and more knowledge coming from uh, some individuals in many of your lives that you least suspect. And so be ready for that because it's not enough just to listen to audio, right? It's not enough to just watch somebody's video. You will be out there 
in the community and there will be some souls, old souls, if you will, that will have a word for you. So do consider what I've said today. And I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Also, if you would like to give, you are willing and you're able to do it, then you um, are welcome to do just that. Um, if it's no link in this description box, there are other links. Um, you can also uh, simply reach out to me uh, via email, NicoleMcGuire at gmail.com, and I will send you a link. Thank you and blessings to you.